Good morning. Good morning. How I'm Phyllis. You? How are you? Can I, you hear me? I, I can hear you. How are you doing? I feel like I know you a little bit by reading your book and getting a sense of your family. So I was trying to figure out where, which school your daughter teaches at. You mentioned a New York school. I, I didn't know which She book. runs the school. She's actually head of school. Oh, wow. And she is. Oh, that's right. That was in your introduction that she, she now is the head of school. This right. Is well, she is actually the founder of that school. It's okay. Hello, and welcome to our high school counselor panel. We're excited to have amazing advisors from all across the United States and from London to share why a gap year is right from you. And moderating this panel, we have Masa Israel Journey's amazing partner, Phyllis Fulb, who's the executive director of the American Israel Gap Year Association and author of the amazing Find Your Right Direction, the Israel Gap Year Guide. I'm Gali Gordon, director of partnerships at Masa. And without further ado, Phyllis Fulb. Hello, everybody. Um, I'm so happy to be here um, and to be a partner with, with Masa for these uh, many years. And I'm very excited because we have an, literally an international panel of, of counseling professionals to answer your frequently asked questions. Um, and I hope that you gain a lot from their pearls of wisdom. So I'm going to introduce our wonderful group. Um, I'm going to start internationally, who's uh, across the pond, so to speak. Uh, Rafi Joseph from the Jewish Free School. He is the uh, head of Jewish studies for a sixth form. Is that correct? I'm saying, hopefully I'm saying that right. That is correct. Um, and he has had, uh, this school is the largest in Europe, 2,000 students. So he's got his hands full, mm -hmm. and, but he is uh, director for the ages 16 and 18 um, students for curriculum and counseling and all things uh, that uh, would be needed for uh, pointing them in the right direction. Um, and then Shira Hirschhoff, um, who has also international experience. Uh, she is the director of Israel Guidance at Eula Girls School in Los Angeles. Uh, she taught both um, in Israel at three seminaries before she came to Los Angeles and has been at Eula for 20 years. And she has been uh, counseling and sending many, many students. And I am proud to say lovingly um, set, taught my own daughters and sent them on their very, very, very successful uh, trips to Israel. And actually my daughter's successful trip was the catalyst actually to my professional career. It was so pow powerful and meaningful to me. So I gained it a lot. So Carrie Cohen. Uh, um, I'm happy to introduce as well. Carrie also has 15 years of experience in college counseling. She spent the last eight years at SAR um, uh, in Riverdale, New York, and now she is in private practice, and we're very happy to welcome her as well. And Laura Miller, Director of College Counseling at the Lethel School, am I correct in saying, pronouncing that correctly? Oh. Uh, she also has 20 years of college counseling, so we really collectively, we have over 100 years of experience right here on the screen. <laughs> um, and she has been doing it at many um, Jewish uh, high schools uh, over her career and uh, has been three years at this school. This school is an independent school um, and uh, gets students from all across um, the Jewish spectrum and, it's, and all across uh, New York and uh, Connecticut and a variety of the tri-state area. Am I correct in saying that? Laura. Okay, so without further ado, I think we're going to talk, ask some of the questions. Um, I'm going to call on one person and then um, we're kind of do this a little bit popcorn style. If you want to chime in and say something that you've learned, please do. And if at the end of our uh, time, you feel that there is something glaringly missing, um, please uh, share because I'm sure all our parents and students would like to hear from you. So first and foremost, um, um, perhaps I'll talk to you, Laura, uh, uh, first of all. Why uh, do you think that a, gap, a student should take a gap year, like in general? And then we'll talk about how we, why we think going to Israel is a particularly important place. That's, that's a great question, Phyllis. And I think even the name gap year sometimes has a misunderstanding because students see it as a break before college. I see it as a required prerequisite 
to go to college. It is something that I truly, truly promote. I'm also the mom of uh, two students, uh, sons of mine who are in college, and I've probably had thousands of students over the years. And I have to say, it's a sad thing when you're all of 22 and your greatest, you already have greatest regrets. And I know uh, my own son, his greatest regret is not doing that gap year. He makes up for it by going away a lot to Israel. But uh, I really have seen with my students the difference between students who spend that year in Israel. They're learning, they're growing, they're learning about themselves, they're learning about the land of Israel, they're learning about what it means to be independent, how to pace themselves, how to decide what they care about through the experiences they have. And by the time they start that first year of college, they are, in terms of their emotional maturity, light years ahead of the students who are coming in straight from high school. And this is something that in the last two decades of doing what I do and, and seeing students come back, uh, it's, it's unbelievable. The students, when they're in their first year of college and they're home for Thanksgiving break, pre-COVID, uh, they always would come and visit the school, right? You wanna go back to your high school, you wanna see your teachers, you wanna walk around, see everybody. And even just from students walking in my office, for 10 minutes, 15 minutes to schmooze with me, the ones who had that year in Israel and then had just two months on a college campus versus the students who graduated in June, went off to college and are coming home a couple months later and talking to them about their experiences. It's as if I'm talking to someone who in terms of emotional light years is so ahead. They are laser focused on what they want out of their education. They, are, they have already adapted to living independently. So all those, all those uh, things that the typical student who has from you know, birth to high school, been home, lovingly had their parents say, get up, it's time to go to school. And what kind of work do you have to do today? And let me take care of you, let me cook for you, let me clean for you, let me do all these things. And then navigating that appropriately when they go to college. The students who are coming from a year in Israel They've already taken care of that and then some. They've had the entire, on top of that independent living piece, which is huge, they've also had the experience of working with other students, living in the land, living independently, deciding what they want, learning about themselves, on top of also being prepared to talk about uh, any of the difficult conversations on a college campus about anti-Semitism, which we can get into later. But it, it, it's really, night and day it is it is apples and oranges wow I maybe mean, we can insert a, an israeli fruit in there um, yeah, wow. but it is it is really two different kids and I, i'll say one last thing and i hate to insult one of my young sons um but my my 20 year old who i'm very proud of uh who's a junior now in college his roommate from his freshman year uh a kid he knew since he was 10 years old from you know jewish sleepaway camp that young man did a gap year. My son did not. And even just that first couple days, you know, getting him settled in his dorm, and I'm speaking to the moms now because, you know, I'm also a parent, um, and getting him settled in and seeing my child appropriately really nervous about the college experience, about settling into a dorm, about, you know, having mommy then drive away and leave him with his things where the other young man, his best friend and his roommate who had just done a YJ year course for the year was like, I got this. I've been living in Israel for a year. This is, this is fine. I don't, I don't know why, why Zach is all worried. It was, it was night and day. Um, right. So I, I say well, this as a counselor and I say it as a parent. Wow, well that was extremely comprehensive. And I think you've, you've spoken for uh, probably the collective group here, but I'm interested in two things, um, Shira and Rafi. One, Shira, I'd like you to speak to the, the Jewish perspective and why um, we feel that it's so important. And Rafi, I'm gonna, uh, after you, I wanna just, I'm very curious as to the difference um, that the gap year perspective in Europe, because the gap year had actually started and was embraced earlier than as it was in, in, in the US. So, hmm. share a first few. Um, so in terms of the, the Jewish thing, a lot of times parents are concerned or, or wanna know why do they have to send their kid on a gap year and spend the money on another year of Jewish education or spending a year in Israel after they just did this, you know, for all the years of, 
elementary school and middle school and high school, and they've already spent hundreds, literally, already, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars. Um, I think that, and I would echo Laura's word independence. I think that there are a lot of ways that kids become independent. And one of the ways they become religiously independent. Um, I think that they need to own their Judaism. And they need to stop and think, whatever type of high school experience they've had, they need to stop and think, where does Judaism fit into their life? And until that point, until they graduate high school, if they are observant, they're often doing things because their parents, their community, their school have told them to. And when they go off to college, no one's going to be looking over their shoulder. And in fact, the opposite is true. People are going to be questioning what they do. And they need to own whatever level of Jewish observance or attachment or tradition they've chosen. They need to make that choice for themselves. And I, I strongly believe that only by separating from everything here and from all of the loving people who have raised and almost made decisions for them and with them all these years, can they really make those choices for themselves. So by going to Israel where you know we talk about our homeland and we talk about a place you know there's no torah like the torah of israel and there are people who are living and breathing the land and the tradition and they can have an immersive experience right in anything you want to learn right the immersive experience whether you're learning a new language or, or anything else the immersive experience is always the best that's why i believe that going to israel is so important um laura touched on the anti-semitism piece unless you live in israel and get to know it and love it and the people and again really own it you will be a different person when you come back onto your college campus and have to answer a roommate, uh, someone on the quad, someone in, a, you know, someone in a, I don't know, a college professor. Um, you're a different advocate. You're a different kind of person who belongs to the Jewish people. Um, so I, I believe in, in the religious independence aspect. I think that that's really important and that that builds when they go off for a year on their own. Rafi, can you share with us a little bit uh your experience with the gap year and how it's perhaps different um, in Europe? Um, I, I'm not 100% sure I can, I, can, uh, I can tell you that the, the main differences between uh, America and Europe, um, you say that it was adopted earlier in, in Europe. Uh, it could be for a number of reasons. I know that um, I think um, from my perspective, what I see is you know students having the opportunity to um, to develop in areas that cannot necessarily be done from a textbook. Um, and I think when you put that against the backdrop of the fact that a lot of people, once they go to university, then that's it. You know, you leave university, you, you meet the world and in terms of professionally. Um, the gap year is really one of the best opportunities that I think our students have in order to gain experiences that they may not necessarily get uh, as they get older. And as we all in this room know, those opportunities as you start families, begin jobs, become less and less and less to be able to have those, those, those opportunities. Um, I think it's thoroughly important um, for people to, to explore areas of their own personality that they've never explored. And I think that can be done um, away from home it can be done uh, in a foreign country where everything's new, the experience is new. Um, I believe the challenge of having to, you know, if you like, lech lecha, as this week's parasha, to leave everything that you have back at home and then go and start afresh gives you networking skills um, that, that are transferable in any scenario that you're in. So, so when you leave home, and you go and have to create, I know when I was in, in Israel, you know, I had to create a network of people that I stayed for Shabbos or had to get this one for help on my Moshav. And, and you develop these skills um, that are actually really helpful for you in life. And those can't necessarily be taught when you've got the comfort of three meals provided for you every day, your washing done for you. All of these comfort things that we have from being at home don't necessarily develop you in those areas. I think um, Laura and both Shira made reference to these things. Um, you know, um, I don't necessarily know why it's more popular in Europe. Maybe our lives are a bit more mundane and therefore we search for something <laughs> a bit more than, than the American lifestyle. You seem to have it all, uh, or as anyone who's watched TV as much as I have probably thinks that way about the States, but, um, I couldn't really tell you what, what the difference is, you know, if I'm being honest. Um, thank you for that. Um, Carrie, I'm interested in, um, very often, uh, I, we get questions from students and parents about whether um, going to Israel and is, when we talk about the gap versus, I often talk about it as a bridge, but, and also 
you know, very well put, actually a mandatory or, or should be a post-secondary um, uh, requirement because it's so powerful. But we do get questions a lot about um, should the students look for programs that give college credits? And I'm interested in hearing your perspective on, you know, whether that really is an important part of it or, or what versus say that what we've talked about so far, the self exploration, the maturity level and all those things that go, go with it. But um, how important is it to get these college credits? versus just going for the experience in and of itself? So, you know, some of the programs obviously will get give college credit and some won't. I would say, you know, it depends on the family and depends on the finances and lots of different things like that. But I would say that you have to find the right match for which gap year program fits for your student or your child. Um, I personally, I have, I have three kids, um, two did, did a gap, gap year in, in Israel and one did something totally different. So, you know, again, it, it depends on the family and the comfort level. Um, I would say the best thing about spending a year on a gap year in Israel, Israel becomes like your second home. And, it be, and it's a place that you really want to go back to year after year. I mean, it, it sort of gets under your skin and you learn the language and you start to learn the culture and you meet, you know, this tiny little country that has so much to offer. Um, so if you can go also, I, I do think that colleges will notice that they did a gap year before and they are more mature. So if I were working on a college campus, I would be happy to have some, a class of freshmen that have, have that extra year of maturity behind their belt. Um, I mean, I, I spent so much time in Israel. It's, it's, it is my second home, but you don't get that just by going for a two week trip. Um, it's really, it, it, it becomes your second home and, and that never goes away. From a co my two, uh, college counselors here, but do you find that the colleges are accepting if they do take, um, get credits from their programs in Israel, are the colleges accepting those credits? It, it depends on the school. Um, it, it just depends on the school. So if you, if you did a program, let's say like Nativ that has a university component, right. those usually will get, give, give credit. Do they lose their freshman status if they've taken college credits? That's a good question. Um, I, I mean, I guess I, I, I would jump in on that and say, I think it's a win-win situation because you're still entering as a first year student, but if you're entering with college credits, I've seen so many students and exactly what Carrie said, I mean, it depends on the school. There are some students of mine who are going to big state schools like Binghamton in Maryland and saying, I have a year of credits. Um, I have other students that are saying, I got you know 12 credits. Well, 12 credits is still 12 credits. A lot of students we're seeing are coming in, they may have sophomore status, but they're still a first year student. Um, so they have credits. If anything, they don't have to take a lot of those you know, 101 classes. It just depends on what their major is. And it, as Carrie said, it depends on the school. We've seen students that have said, I can graduate a year early or I can have my last senior year semester taking just a couple classes. I have a, a, a number of students of mine who are now really enjoying that last semester of their senior year because they can really take a light load, uh, which, is, which is more pleasurable and certainly gives you more free time for internships. Um, I want to also um, mention something. Carrie made a great point, um, if I may just kind of uh, uh, kosher piggyback on uh, your, your comment, Harry, about you know, families who have been uh, in Israel for two weeks and how different it is. Our school actually puts in a two-month trip to Israel as part of the second semester of our senior year. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a wonderful aspect of our school that you get to spend eight weeks in Israel. And I get that a lot from parents. Well, why should we, after my child at 17, 18, just spent two months in Israel uh, how do they need another nine months in Israel? They just had that experience, second semester of their senior year. 
And exactly what, uh, you know, Carrie um, highlighted, which is, it's so different. I've, I've been on that program as a faculty member where everything has an itinerary from the moment you wake up and we're organizing every moment. And what <laughs> Rafi spoke about, even trying to, in terms of uh, the maturity of figuring out what you're gonna do for Shabbos and where you're gonna go, we, we, they don't have to figure out a thing for eight weeks. We are programming them lovingly, but we're programming every minute of, of every day. So it is so different when all of a sudden you're not that tourist or, or you're not a school participant. So for anyone who's listening in and saying, our family goes to Israel two, three times a year, we go for circus, we go for Pesach, our school um, has a program, it's, it's still completely different. Right. So that's, that brings us to this very important question, which is, um, and, and this is, I'm gonna ask for a little input on, um, for everybody, uh, so um, you know, try to think of your top uh, ideas so we, everybody gets a turn to talk about this. And that is, how is you as a counselor, do you um, look at your student and evaluate and, and guide them to the appropriate program? And then the second part of that question would be, how would, if their parents are, are looking in on this and or students even, what what tips you would give them to then internalize a what's the right program for me like we as counselors can make those suggestions but then the family also has to have some input in terms of what's right for their family and the student needs as shira originally said needs to take ownership of this decision so they feel really good about it so i'm going to just share i'll just start with you and then we'll just go around Okay, so um, I have an advantage that I'm also a Judaic studies teacher in EULA. So um, for the last several years and over the 20 years I've had different, um, I've taught different grades, but it's always been very important to me that I teach ninth grade. And I start to get to know the kids in ninth grade. So even if I teach them, if I don't teach them 10th and or 11th, I teach all the 12th graders. So the first step is that I get to know them in different ways. So, I, so I'll know them in the classroom. I'll, you know, I'm a as I hang out with them during extracurriculars. Um, so getting to know the whole child. You know, I have kids coming to me and saying, where should I go? Um, I still don't have a crystal ball. They, they've asked me that. Like, well, can't you just see it? And I'm like, well, I could like look at your forehead, but I don't think that's going to do it. So the partnership with parents, I believe also is critical. Um, you know, I invite the parents in to meet with me and sometimes I'll meet with parents without the kid and the parents will say to me, listen, don't tell my daughter I was here, but you know, and then they'll give me a whole thing of their concerns or what they really hope for what they want. And then the kid will come to me like, listen, don't tell my mom, but you know, this is really what I'm looking for. And then I, you know, we'll speak to each side I'm like, well, I've never met the other ones, but here's what I'm just conjecturing, you know, so just playing that bridge or liaison between the parents and the child um, and making sure that everyone's on the same page in terms of what they're looking for. Um, and then I think also, and Phyllis, you did a great job of this in the book of breaking down the schools into different components. So, you know, I need to ask a kid, what type of learning do you want? Do you want full day learning? Do you want half day learning? What type of volunteer programs do you want? Um, you know, the like Carrie was talking about the college credit thing. Is this something, some parents are very focused on the college piece. And the only way I can convince them to send their kid to Israel is if there's a full year of college credit. Okay, so then that has to be a priority. Some kids want something very Israeli. Some kids don't want Israeli. Some kids, and I hope I'm not offending any New Yorkers. I, I have kids who come to me and they're like, okay, which school doesn't have a lot of New Yorkers? I'm like, uh, well, <laughs> considering most Jews live in New York in this country, I really can't help you, <laughs> you know? So it, the kids come with all different, and, and I tell the kids, be as honest as possible. You know, they'll say to me, well, I need a little bit of space. And then I'm like, okay, well, do you need a large dorm room? And they're like, no, well, I kind of can't go to one of those really religious places. I'm like, oh, okay, you need a place that's going to allow you to go to town and have a little bit of a good time in the beginning and not get you know, not get thrown out just, you know, for the first thing. Um, the, the more honest the kids are with me and the parents are, um, you know, if, if parents are really concerned, then I'll make sure that it's a place that provides three meals a day. They don't want to hear that, you know, their kid has to make dinner for themselves. And some parents are like, well, this is a great opportunity for independence building. I want her to cook, clean, and shop for herself. So, and at this point, you know, some of us have referenced when we went when we went to Israel and took a gap year, you know, maybe it was 20 years ago or more, um, it was very different. There weren't as many choices. And now, thank God, there are so many choices that whatever a kid or their parent wants, we usually can find not just one, but a few options for them to explore. So I think that 
asking a lot of questions, getting to know the kid and what they want. And not only that, but it means you have to know the programs really well. Um, you have to know what they're offering. Um, and just because they say something on paper, or just because they say something in a recruitment process um, presentation, um, may not be the reality. So um, I go to Israel every year and I, I visit the schools and I talk to our alumni and I, I see what, what is really going on on the ground. Um, and also I always encourage the kids to reach out to the, to the students who are there now. Um, that is something I'm not doing right this moment because I think that our students who are there now are still adjusting. Some kids have just gotten there. Some kids are just getting out of their first, second, I have one kid who's been in quarantine three times now. Wow. So I don't know that now's the best time to talk to the kids who are there. Um, but I did tell them, you know, I would say wait till Thanksgiving, talk to them, see what's really going on and ask them the tough questions. I think there's a lot of different angles of research to help find the best place. Carrie, your um, thoughts on it? On, on what, what I, I think, what's um, some key ways to evaluate what a good, a program that is right for the student or you know, and your perspective from a, from a counselor and maybe from how the student can evaluate. Who are you asking, Phyllis? Carrie. You're asking you. me. Um, I, I think actually Shira spoke, you know, very well about getting to know the students and the families because sometimes, right, the families and the students might not be in the same place, but having those conversations and having them also in school, um, when I was at SAR, there was also counseling for which programs made sense. And you know, a lot of times it might be different for the student's perspective than it is for the parent's perspective. Um, but like you said, there are so many more programs now, um, so many opportunities for students to, to get involved in what makes sense for them. Um, and obviously the parents have to be a part of that conversation. I want to close with a very kind of, this is a, a, a big question, um, but I hope you uh, chime in. Um, do you think that a gap year is right for every student, that everyone should take a gap year? I don't think so. I mean, I, in general, you know, I don't know what the details are, what the finances are, um, what students um, might be struggling with, and maybe it's not a good time. Um, I don't think it's for everybody. I, I really think um, that it can be incredibly beneficial, but it's hard to put a whole blanket on, on everybody. Um, and anyone else have some other thoughts? I mean, I, I guess I would say it's, it would be a similar uh, question if you were to say, is college right? for everybody and certainly there are people that you know it might not necessarily be right for um, certainly you know there there are some students that maybe fall into a small minority but i would say that similar to when you look at how you uh, understand the right college for a student you look at different factors and uh, what's the right fit and we overuse that term in college counseling, but I think even finding the right gap year program has to also be the right fit. Uh, and I think there is no shortage of programs. The, the breadth and depth of what's out there in terms of programs. So Shira spoke about uh, the programs that are very extensive in terms of, you know, a Torah-based Jewish learning program. There are programs that are more educationally based. I mean, there's certainly education and everything. Um, programs that are based on, uh, you know, internships, volunteer work. So there's, there's no shortage of learning, uh, living, touring, growing in all of them, but they all kind of have their unique different uh, aspects. And I think finding the right fit, the average student, I think you can look at all these programs and say, actually, I think not only just one, but I could probably come up with at least five or six, or maybe even a dozen programs where I could feel really comfortable um, and have that support. I also wanna say as a shout out to just Massa in general, all these programs are under the umbrella of Massa. It, it's kind of like having a, a, an all encompassing mommy overlooking things and saying, is everything gonna be safe? Is everything going to be okay? Is everything up to a certain standard? So you're not just uh, to, to inject some Yiddish here in the Belteron, just you know, running out uh, to some random program that nobody knows about. It's also, yeah, it's also an approved 
uh, Masa program, which I think maybe students don't think about, but I think as parents, there's there's a comfort there of okay, mm -hmm. I can I can feel good sending my child to to this program. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you have given us a, a huge breadth of information and. Uh, I know that the parents and students are very grateful to hear from you all. I encourage, if you haven't already been um, taking a whirl around our virtual uh, fair, do so. And there are many uh, programs to look at. And uh, and I'm just going to echo too. You know, part of which I reason in the book that I that I wrote. We do have all so many to review and uh, there as what Laura said and everybody echoed here there it really is something for everyone if if this is something that you want to explore for your child or for yourself if students were looking in there is a program for you and so do your research um, uh, call reach out to your counselors reach out to us at a gya reach out to to Masa, uh, we are all here for you. This, this is, I mean, I can certainly speak for myself, but I know the passion that all of you feel. This is certainly my life's work and we wanna make this um, uh, right for you. So, and, and for you to find your right direction. So thank you all uh, counselors for joining us today and, uh, and students and parents enjoy the fair.